Let's look at task 2A. We have to complete the price list in the spreadsheet. So we're in the price list sheet, you'll see you down at the bottom, and we've got a number of tasks to do. The first one is to enter a formula to calculate the total cost of the goodie bag. So we have a space for it, but we need to know the total. To the right of this, we do have the goodie bag, and we can see there's four items to go in it. We need to make sure that we can add up all the items and put the total back into cell B13. So I'm going to start with B13, click in it. I'm going to start typing equals sum. I'm going to open the bracket. You'll notice there Excel is asking me what do I want to add. I'm going to go across to my goodie bag prices, starting on the first one, the water bottle, and I'm just going to highlight all four. And you'll notice there oops, that it's E10 to E13. So everything from E10 down to E13, that is correct. I'll press enter and there I have the price of the goodie bag, £2.55. The second thing we have to do, up here, centre and embolden the heading. The heading here is in this cell. We are going to click on bold and then centre and that's that one done. Number three, it's telling us that band members will be paid their basic rate, which is £25, plus 40% extra. So we've got to work out 40% of £25 and add it on to the £25. And the quickest way to do this is again to click in the cell where do I want the answer in E4. I'm going to type in equals. I'm going to take the basic price and I'm actually going to multiply it by 1.4. So essentially I'm able to take the initial £25 and add 40% on top of that to give me the overtime rate. You'll notice there that the basic rate has been named because the word basic is showing. That's a named cell. So I'm going to press return and the overtime rate per hour is £35. The second part of the question is asking us to uh, name this cell also. At the moment, if we look in the, um, the name bar at the top here, it is E4, which is correct. We are in column E and row 4. To name it, I'm going to click on the E4, delete, take it out of the name box, and instead I'm going to type in the word overtime. And remember, if you're typing two words, you can't leave a space, you'd have to have an underscore, but we just have the one word overtime. Press return, and that is us naming the cell. If you wanted to quickly check to make sure you have actually named it, you just click away, click back in, and you'll see the name box has overtime in it. So that's the three things that you need to do. There is a fourth note here. You'll see there, number four, format all cells appropriately. And actually looking at my price list, I'm quite happy that everything has been formatted appropriately because I can see I have got pound signs for everything and two decimal places for everything. So that one is fine. The last thing we have to do is to print off your work, a one copy in value view, which is what you're looking at, and one copy in formula view. What you might want to do first of all is perhaps hide the various notes, one, two, three, four. So we'll go into, for example, in the goodie bag, note one, click on the cell, right click, and we can show or hide, let's hide the notes for all three, four actually, tasks we've been given. So for printing, to print um, in um, landscape with the grid lines only, I personally highlight the text ready for selecting test for printing. We go into page layout, we go to orientation, let's change that to landscape. With grid lines only, we go along to sheet options. We'll see we've got grid lines and headings both ticked for viewing. We can see that. If you want to print the grid lines, you have to check the print box, but we'll leave the headings for the time being. So that's how you would print off in value view to show in formula view also in landscape, but this time with grid lines and the row and column headings. So we know we're in portrait already. 
to get to the formula, it is the control button on your keyboard on the left hand side. Press it down and click on the shoulder key, which is the black button below the escape key, to turn it into formula. You'll see there quite clearly where you have put your formulas in. At this point you could widen or um, and narrow depending on, on what your document looks like and how it's going to print. And if we want to show grid lines and row and column headings, we've got grid lines checked already. We'd have to check the headings box also. And remember to turn it back into value view, control, shoulder key takes you back. And if you have been adjusting columns, etc., you might need to adjust them back. So that is how you do Task 2A, Part 1.